And the thing that's really fascinating about this too is is how incredibly small it is. This is a very small footprint in terms of hard, both you know hardware and power and everything. We have some uh, examples of it here. This is your um, reference design for the product. Point out to us the different parts of the circuitry that we're looking at here. Okay, so here's the yeah, basic system. Uh, the main part, of course, the heart of it is this uh, small GPS radio here and the TCXO crystal that keeps time. Uh, when this is turned on, data streams from this through the microcontroller and stored away in the flash. Um, when you come to unload it, the uh, microcontroller then uh, streams the data out from the flash via USB onto your PC. Well, that's great. We've actually got a little USB connector integrated on the corner of the uh, car. You just slide the thing edgewise into a USB slot. And, and of course, in a, in a digital camera, the digital camera already has a controller and the flash memory and the power and the USB connection. So really, all that the camera needs is just this little bit of circuitry up at the top here, correct? Absolutely. So yes, we just need the radio and the crystal, and then we can reuse all the other components that are on the digital camera. Okay, and this being a reference design now, so this is um, still built at a relatively low level of integration compared to what you would do in a, a you know, really mass production product. Um, how much will that circuitry reduce down as you go into a full, you know, full integration? Now, there's a lot of pressure in the industry to reduce the size of this, particularly, for example, going into mobile phones. So, sort of middle of this year, we'll be seeing uh, devices of the dimension of about 5 by 5 millimeters. Wow, that's incredibly tiny. Does that include the TXO crystal as well, or is that TXO crystal as well, or is that um, uh, the, the, the camera phone? The camera would already have a crystal in it? No. For GPS, you need a very accurate crystal, so we would have the TCXO, but in that 5x5 five five dimension, you would include the uh, crystal. That includes the crystal, Absolutely wow. Everything, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. And um, uh, in terms of cost and build materials, uh, what would that end up costing in uh, you know, large-scale production? So we're thinking somewhere of the order of uh, $4 as, as we ramp up, but of course, once we get into the millions, it will start to go down from there. Yeah. Wow, so we may end up at, um, you know, some, somewhere a year into it, we may have $2 bill of materials here. It could well be, yes. Wow, that's incredible. And so $2 bill of materials, just for the readers, that may translate into, you know, 10 to $15, maybe 20 I don't know, in the, in the, in the finished camera, but a relatively, it's a relatively small component of the overall cost of the device at that point. Well, that's incredible. And the uh, and the the power consumption of this uh, for each fix is uh, about how much was it was it take to actually generate a fix? It's about uh, 20 millijoules to actually produce a fix because this, the radio comes on for this uh, so 100 milliseconds and then it can go off again. Uh, millijoules. Well, that's that, that's like nothing. Was that it's very very tiny? Uh, a millijoule would be uh, a milliamp at a volt. Is that uh, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, one volt, 20 milliamps for 100 milliseconds. That's that's pretty darn that's pretty darn fast. Very tiny. Well, that's really fascinating. We'll take, uh, we'll take a look, too, at the um, software here, how this might be implemented. Uh, if you have an image that's been tagged, and then to go through the processing to identify where that was taken and, and give you a result. Um, you have that running, I think, on this, uh, p this laptop here. Yeah, that's right. So uh, along the bottom here are a set of pictures that we captured walking along the strip when we came here on Wednesday. Uh, again, uh, when we were doing the, the pictures, we were capturing the GPS data. Uh, so it's all set to go now. When I press the button here, we start then using our software initially for this image to generate the position fix. So I start it going. It takes about five seconds to uh, generate this fix, at which point you'll see the map switch from a nice green England to a uh, center of uh, Las Vegas. And there we are. And if I zoom in, you'll see um, a few more images appearing, which as it goes through the uh, the full portfolio of the photos that we've taken. And you, you get a nice view of the route mm. that we took walking along the strip that day. Wow, that's great. You know, I'd say it's almost scary. That's, you can actually see where you went and what you did. That's really fascinating. So each one of those icons there is another, another photo that you captured. That's right. It shows the position, uh, the calculated position of which we took the, uh, took the photograph. And this is going to have you know, normal GPS accuracy. And so uh, these days, now that they've done away with the um, uh, I'm selected, for, the, the selected availability, mm -hmm. Um, this is accurate to within, what, a few meters kind of thing? Yeah, typically uh, with a good view of the open sky. At the moment, we're about 10 meters accuracy. 10 meters accuracy. Wow, that is really something else. Well, so there you have it, snapshot GPS technology from NXP software. You know, I really think that this is the, uh, the big technology that we're looking for when we came here. You know, we always try to find what it is that's going to make a, a real change in the market and, and, and point a new direction. And this really looks to me like it's it. I, I think that 12 to 24 months from now, we're going to see a large number of digital cameras and, as Paul was saying, cell phones start to have GPS integrated into them. Well, Paul, thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, best luck with the, uh, the technology, and I really look forward to seeing it in a camera phone near you.